What's up guys, John from Linkswell here. And in this workshop, I'm gonna give you three ways that you can get the most out of your Linkswell install. So I'm sure if you guys know anything about Linkswell, uh, you know uh, that our, our products are super packed with features. Um, and sometimes it can seem a little bit overwhelming. So I'm really hoping that we could take some time, three ways uh, to kind of help ease maybe your fears of your first installation. Uh, get you excited perhaps about the fact that you've installed a few and you're wanting to see what else you can do with it um, and then just talk about what we work we do so that two things one your install is easy as possible your your labor is as easy as possible and two that your customer just genuinely enjoys the product and that they come back and buy more things from you because you're the one who put the install uh, the links well in for them so that's what we're hoping to do this uh in, during this workshop all right, guys, so I'm not going to bore you with uh, how to disassemble the dash of a car and, you know, do all of this stuff like that. I'm assuming you guys have put in a couple radios, so you got an idea of how to pull apart a dash. What I want to do, though, is talk a little bit about what makes us different when it comes to the installation. And a lot of that is our harnessing and the fact that we are all plug and play. So uh, I'm chilling in our Tacoma right now, so I'm just going to walk you through what you should be able to find in pretty much every T-Style radio. Uh, obviously, these ones will be specific for the Tacoma, but they'll be specific depending if it's a Ford or Dodge or any of that stuff. Uh, but so, for example, we've got uh, our two power harnesses here. Why do we have two power harnesses? Because Toyota loves to do just kind of a mid mid product shift. Uh, so regardless of whether you've got the newer Tacoma harness or the older Tacoma harness, so you got both of them are coming in here. And you can see we've got factory matched female plugs going right into our, our radio plug. So the installation, when it comes to, you don't need to get uh, a maestro piece or a pack piece and you're not butt connecting wires or soldering wires, whatever, you know, whatever side of the fence you fall on, whether butt connectors are better or solder, not, not, not the place to fight that, but you don't got to do all of that because we're all plug and play. There's nothing you need to do. And then we've got our can box and it's as simple as just taking and finding the can box plug on our factory harness. Uh, and then you plug in. And then that's all of your interfacing happening right there. We're gonna do all of the retention for steering wheel controls. You won't even need to program those. They are actually pre-programmed. Uh, you're gonna keep things like factory reverse trigger. All of that stuff is pre-set up. It's all done within the CAN bus. So really simple when it comes to install. You're not gonna have to go through and, and process the, the module and say, hey, I have this, I need that, I need this, and no no buck connectors. You're gonna get in here, you're gonna pull the radio out, you're gonna figure out which power harness it fits, plug in the power harness, and now you've got the power harness. And then we've got things where, depending on what version of U factory USB you have, because again, Toyota changed it, uh, Dodge has changed it. Uh, we've got uh, a way to retain your factory USB hubs, uh, but let me just give a caveat. I'm sure most of you guys know this, a lot of the factory hubs have a ton of electronics in it that the factory uses to do a lot of its handshake between phones and stuff. So when you retain factory hubs, sometimes those the factory circuitry in there will kind of make things a little funky. So just know that going in, we can retain your factory hubs, but there is a possibility that depending on what device they're trying to plug in, it might act a little funky. And that's just because of the way the hub is designed and built. We do our best, but just know we will retain it. There's a slight possibility that it's not going to work. Uh, but within that as well, um, if you have like a Dodge or a Jeep where you've got the factory 3.5 or even the Ford with the factory 3.5, we can retain uh, that with US or with RCAs. They'll actually be on that main power harness. So again, like I said, retaining all of the factory things. Uh, we got your factory backup camera. So yeah, on this one specifically, you can see the Tacoma. There's our factory backup camera. So we're going to turn that signal into a simple RCA where you'll plug into one of our inputs, and I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, things like your climate controls. So see, again, factory uh, plug and play when it comes to your climate control. So when it comes to the wiring of getting our radio into the vehicle side of things, it is literally unplugging and replugging, matching plugs. It's going to be as simple as that. Not, not rocket science at all. You're not going to even need to pull out your crimpers. Um, we're going to do all that. We're going to create... You know, I can remember back in the days trying to find the video signal for a factory camera and all that stuff. We're going to do all that work for you guys. So it's as simple as possible. You're not cutting any harnesses. And I think that is a key in a lot of the questions that a customer has because our dashes look like we're doing a lot of work to the dash itself where we're cutting things and we're not. We're not even cutting plugs. So plug and play, 
snap in the dash. We're not going to mess anything up. So you can let your customers know that's super safe. But some of the things that are going to be now specific to just the Linkswall radio, not just our interfacing to the vehicle, uh, but some certain some things that are going to be specific. So you should have, if you're going to do a Generation 6 or an XL, uh, they have a SIM card slot where you can add a SIM card and have internet on the radio uh, directly. That's right, internet on your radio. And so we'll give you two 4G antennas. Rule of thumb with an antenna, you guys know, the higher up, the better it works. Will these work behind the dash? Yes. Will they work better up on the windshield? Yes. Answer to the both of those is yes. You just decide kind of what is what. Uh, we also have a Wi-Fi antenna. Now they look the same, but the plug is different. Now, even if you plan on, or your customer doesn't plan on using Wi-Fi, make sure you install this because Wi-Fi is actually how wireless CarPlay works. And so if you don't install this Wi-Fi antenna, then what ends up happening is their CarPlay will constantly disconnect and you'll have a really upset customer because every time they drive somewhere, their Wi-Fi or their CarPlay or Android Auto drops. So you want to make sure that no matter what, whether they're using Wi-Fi, whether they're using SIM card, to make sure that you do for sure install that Wi-Fi antenna. And the other one is going to be a navigation antenna. Uh, and again, I'm assuming you guys have installed enough radios that you know that's pretty much a generic navigation antenna. And even if you aren't uh, going to do like the iGo upgrade on one of our radios, that antenna actually is necessary because the tablet itself is going to need its location so that it can match itself with its source, whether it's Wi-Fi or whether it is uh, using the 4G. So just know if it's in there, you should probably plug it in, especially when it comes to an antenna. So you wanna make sure you do those 4Gs, even if they don't plan on putting a SIM card in, my guess is eventually they will want to. Uh, in the Wi-Fi, even if they don't plan on using Wi-Fi again because of the CarPlay, make sure that nav antenna is plugged in. And then we've got all of our different uh, accessory plug-ins. So we've got all of our RCA pre-outs right there, front, rear, and sub. Uh, we've got our microphone input. Uh, I know we do a lot of work to interface, and the question is asked quite a bit. Can we can retain the factory microphone? And the answer is no, because they actually are not created equal. Uh, so the interfacing is just not a viable thing. So yes, you do have to install our microphone. No, it will not retain the factory one. No, there is not one on the face of the radio. It is an external one. You're going to want to make sure that you uh, install that. Uh, but then we got front rear sub RCA pre-outs uh, with all of the EQ and sub control. We've got some videos about that stuff. Uh, we've give you an auxiliary input. We also have an option for you to do an HDMI input, but that's a whole nother video. We've got our toss link plug here. So if you're going to do a DSP or a high-end amp that's got the uh, fiber optic in, we got you guys, we got you a straight digital signal. So you can have that really, really nice crisp sound as well as all of the features that we have on our radio. We've got our camera input. So here's where, if you've got a factory camera, you would plug in uh, your factory camera. One of these RCAs is marked as factory cam input. And then we'll also give you a front camera input and a side camera input. So if you wanted to add cameras, if customer wanted to have a front camera or a side camera, they can add that. We do have an optional multicam interface that will add multiple cameras if you wanted to do six extra cameras it's another module that's another video we'll talk about that on a different video and then a third usb because you can never have too many usb inputs when you have something as cool as an android radio and then when it comes to the dash itself uh when it comes to the kit let me just show you real quick here so this is our tacoma radio and you can see uh, our kit is built and made designed to look like it uh, belongs in there couple cool things about uh, our kits. Um, I've been in this industry a minute, so I can remember different install kits where you were screwing in a radio, but the kit was designed to just snap in and they just never sat right. So we took a lot of those kind of uh, experiences of our own when it came to developing these. And you can see like certain radios, like this one here, we've got a couple screw holes here, which means that this radio not only is going to fit factory, and not only is it going to look factory, but it'll actually screw in like factory. So you don't have to worry about it falling out or having, you know, snaps or break or anything like that. But you're not going to have to do any kind of work when it comes to the install as far as the kit's concerned, because it's all there. The screen's mounted, the radio's mounted, the chassis's mounted, the boards are mounted. You're literally going to pull out all that factory stuff, take all of our plug and play harnesses, plug all of that stuff into the vehicle and then plug in the radio, snap the radio in. And then we'll talk about what to do after that in our next session. All right, guys, just as we make sure that our install is as easy as possible, we want to make the programming as easy as possible as well. 
Uh, so because vehicles come with a variety of trim levels and a variety of features, this is going to be the next biggest and most important thing for you to do after you've made sure you have all the right plugs is you're going to want to make sure that you've told the radio exactly what vehicle it's in. Um, and it's a really simple process, so I want to walk you through real quick. Once the radio has been installed and everything's plugged in, uh, you are going to take a look at that factory climate control, figure out whether it has like dual climate, uh, whether it has seat heaters, seat coolers, steering wheel heaters, and stuff like that. You want to figure out all of the features that it had from the factory. And then once you've got an idea of what you're doing, we're going to go into settings, and it's going to be this icon here that's got the little gray gear. Uh, and this is going to be our radio settings. And uh, you should have the options across the top. We're going to go ahead and we're going to select system. And then from system, our first option should say settings guide. If it's already been pressed and it's in that second menu, there is a little back arrow back here, just so you know that's going to take you back a menu. But you want system where it says settings guide. We're going to select settings guide. And now we're in kind of the, the, the bulk of us programming the radio as far as what features it has. Specifically, we're going to talk about car model AC. So here's where we're going to tell it what it has when it comes to uh, the AC control. So we're going to hit uh, car model AC. And then you should have this three column menu. And depending on what vehicle it is, obviously, is going to depend on what uh, options you hit. So for us, we're in our Tacoma. So we would hit Toyota, Tacoma. And then you have the options of high or low. So here's where I mentioned that you want to make sure that you have the you know exactly what the vehicle had from the factory. Uh, so rule of thumb, if it has dual climate, meaning that you can separate uh, temperatures from passenger and driver, if it has a dual climate, it's going to be a high level trim level. So it's going to be a high version when it comes to the climate control. If it's got a standard single zone, meaning you can only adjust one temperature at a time, then that's going to be your low setting and you'll select low there. And once you've selected high or low, it'll reboot. I'm not going to do it because I need the radio to stay on for our demo. Uh, but you would select that and it would go ahead and reboot and then it should all be functioning. Uh, one quick note, if you happen to be doing a Dodge, uh, you'll notice with Dodge, there's actually three different options. Um, so the rule of thumb within the Dodge is the Ram low is going to be any Dodge Ram that's only got four speeds when it comes to the fan. So uh, a little more work when it's going to come to the Dodge. But if you look at the Dodge climate controls and you see four notches, then you'll know for sure it's a Ram low. Or even if you've pulled the radio out and you've noticed that there was two plugs for the factory climate control, a big fat one with a bunch of big wires or, and one long skinny one, that would be uh, your Ram low. Anything else that's not four speed or doesn't have an eight inch Uconnect screen will be your Ram mid. That's your mid-level uh, stuff. It, it could be um, really, really small screen. It could be the one with no screen, uh, but it's gonna have seven clicks on the fan, uh, which is making things a little different. And then Dodge Ram high is gonna be any of the vehicles that have that factory eight inch Uconnect screen is gonna be the Ram high. So just so you know on those ones, but when it comes to like the Ford, uh, you pretty much are just gonna have high and low. Uh, when it comes to the Silverado, uh, it's going to ask you if it had manual or auto uh, climates. Uh, so it's going to break it down pretty simple for you. Uh, you can see with the Tundra, there is three options with the Tundra, whether it's low, high, or high with seat heaters. Um, actually, now that I think about it, let me say this. If you have a Tundra that has seat heaters and not seat coolers, you will want to turn on both because the way the Toyotas work is uh, the cool button actually becomes a negative button and the high button becomes an up button. So it, it works more as a pendulum from zero to cold, from zero to hot, not just the, the, the hot or cold seat. So you would wanna make sure you turn on both of those, which I will show you in two seconds. So once you have selected, uh, you know, that you've got the correct radio um, and you have, or the correct uh, climate control settings, it's gonna go ahead, it'll reboot. And then once it's rebooted, it's gonna kick you back out. It's gonna reboot and all of your climate control features should work. So. Now, there are going to be a few variants out there. Uh, so there are going to be trim levels that perhaps is a low version, but has seat heaters or has seat coolers. There, there are always going to be those anomalies out there that are just not standard. They're going to work with the default setting. So if you happen to have one of those vehicles where you've set it to high or you've set it to low or whatever, and then when you come in and you go to the climate controls here down at the bottom, you don't see like a seat heater icon or a seat cooler icon or you don't see the steering wheel heater icon. If any of those icons are missing, it's as simple as turning them on. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go back into settings. Let me back out one here. We'll go back into system. Uh, we're going to go into settings guide, but this time instead of hitting car model AC, you're start going down the list. So we have the seat and wheel. Uh, so we'll select this. 
And here's where you can turn on steering wheel heater, turn on uh, heated seats, turn on cooled seats, whatever features that you're missing, you would just turn them on there. And once they've been turned on up here on the top right corner is a save and reboot. You can save and reboot. And now when it comes back on, those icons are gonna be there. So once again, if it's a Tundra with only seat heaters, you will wanna make sure that the seat cooler icon does get turned on because otherwise you won't be able to turn the heaters off because they'll just go up. You need that cool button to make them go back down. So that's the only kind of weird one. But once you're here, so here's, go, let me walk you through just a couple more possible settings uh, since we're here. Uh, so we have seat and wheel we talked about. So camera switch, uh, this one is gonna be, I mentioned uh, when I talked about all of the, the plugs and the install, uh, our multicam interface. So if you happen to be installing our multicam interface, cool thing about our multicam interface is not only are we going to give you the can fed triggers, so turn signals and speed sense and all that stuff to make the cameras turn on, we'll give you all of that stuff built in. You won't have to run any wires, but we'll also give you the ability on screen to control it. But the radio needs to know the modules there. So you would go here and you would turn on multicam interface, which would then create that op the, all of the icons and whatnot to control it. Now, if you've got that factory Ford 360 camera, you turn on that 360 camera and then we actually have an adapter that can retain all that. So here's where you would do that. So if you're running multicam, you wanna make sure multicam's on. If you're running a 360 camera, then you wanna make 360 cameras on. Do not let them both be turned on or neither one will work. There you go. One or the other, they both can't be on. But that's where you would turn those on. Um, and then you've got different settings uh, like factory amp. So if you have a system where the radio making the speakers pop because it's an Alpine system or a Bose system or something like that, you can turn on that factory amp and it's kind of an attenuator to kind of lower those outputs so you don't have to worry about doing that. Uh, reverse mute, you can change it. So when I put it in reverse, I want the radio to cut off completely. I just want it to, uh, I want the audio to just dim or I just want the audio to stay the same. We've got the options for you there. Radar sound, that's for your back factory backup sensor. So you can turn the sounds on and off there. Right hand drive, because we do uh, occasionally have a customer purchase this uh, uh, overseas who has a right hand drive car. So that right there. So if by any chance you happen to install a radio and you notice that when you open the driver's door, it shows the passenger door uh, open icon on the screen. It's just literally going there, flipping that and that'll fix that. Um, you got door trip. We, that's where it's going to show show door state if you want the icon to pop up. And then one other feature that I think is really cool. Uh, sometimes during manufacturing, a steering wheel control, control button will get installed upside down. Um, when it goes through the factory, the factory will program accordingly. But for us, we're using the default. So if you have a, a, a vehicle that for whatever reason, the volume up or the track up are backwards. So you push up, it goes backwards. You push down, it goes forwards. If you ever run into either one of those, whether it's volume or uh, your track buttons, here's where these options can be flipped. So where it says... Uh, SWC previous next button negative or SWC volume up down negative. You can see we have a toggle switch. So if one of those is backwards, you just come in there and you flip the switch to whichever one is off. Just flip that switch one time to whatever the opposite setting is, hit save and reboot, and then your steering wheel controls should be uh, up and running. Um, and then, you know, you got all your normal settings. You can set your time, your dimmer, all of that stuff. It's going to be super simple. Um, I will say you'll probably want to make sure you set the time for the customer because, you know, customers are customers and, you know, they do whatever. Uh, but for the most part, once the install is done, the most important thing after making sure you got those harnesses together is making sure that you have the program set up correctly when it comes to the climate controls and all of those features. And like I said, 99% of the time, the climate issues that we get phone calls on are literally just as simple as setting one of those uh, settings because someone didn't know. Uh, but now you know. So now you know is it, how easy it is to physically install one of our radios. And now you know how easy it is to program it. I mean, come on, that's super simple. So now, what do you say we talk about customizing it a bit? All right, so if the ease of install and the simplicity of programming isn't enough of a reason for you to sell a link tool to one of your customers, I want to talk about how easy and how in-depth your customizing can go when it comes to uh, a Lynxwell radio. So you can notice we've actually got a picture that it's our Tacoma. So if you guys have seen our Tacoma, it's pretty cool. Uh, but that's our Tacoma there on the background. It's going to come with a very uh, default UI. Um, it's going to have a very uh, pastel background, uh, just simple icons. It's going to look just like as if you had just bought a brand new phone. Exactly like that. We're going to have our default apps. But the best thing is your customer from that point on 
is is able to really make this radio about them and function the way they are. So you can see here, um, if you swipe over here, so these are some of the, the main widgets that will come with the radio, some big icons that you can program. Um, but you notice, watch this, I can hold it and I can move whatever I want to around. And not only that, you can notice I've actually been able to group apps. So um, we do some fun things when it comes to the off-roading uh, community. So we'll use apps like Gaia, Onyx Off-Road, some camp spot things. So we can create, literally, you can see right here, I have a, a grouped icon called Off-Road, where I can put all kinds of different apps in there. I can name those whatever I want to. So literally, if you can do it with your phone, um, the chances are you can do it uh, with our radio. Uh, another cool thing uh, when it comes to apps, so if I was to go ahead and say um, different apps will have what's called widgets, so I can push and hold an app, and I can see, oh, hang on, I'm moving it, didn't want to move it. I can select a widget, and now I have this option to throw on this Netflix widget. Yes, I said Netflix. Don't watch while you're driving, guys. Don't watch while you're driving. And now I can throw it up there, and now I've got a little cool little Netflix widget. This up here on top where it shows the temperature, that's a weather widget. And I can actually adjust the size of it, the way it looks, what information is on up there, how, how dark the background is. Like a lot of these widgets, you can really, really get into uh, just the way you want it to look. And of course, we've got multiple pages. So if you want your homepage to just be an image of whatever, your family, uh, your vehicle, a, a beautiful picture you took while you were camping or out on a family vacation or something, you can literally have that and then have all of your apps on second pages and third pages and fourth pages. If you want to separate your pages when it comes to, you know, this style app, this kind of app, all of that stuff is super simple is just clicking, dragging and putting it uh, wherever you want to. Uh, you can change the background image as simply as by pushing and holding and, and changing the wallpaper. So I can come in here and I can make that my background now. So now I'm going to select that, set as wallpaper. I'm going to select screen and lock screen. And now it's as simple as that. Now I've got a complete background. So you go get an image. You create the image the correct size, right? 19, or 1080 by 1920. And then you go here, plug it into one of the USBs. You can push and hold. And then you can, as easy as that, change uh, what the background looks like on your radio, super simple, making it easy to accomplish. Now I do have videos where you can actually put a live background on the back. I don't know if this is the video for that. Cause it's kind of a, yeah, watch that video, but we can, we can do a whole live background on there using like TikTok or something like that. And then if you want no apps on your homepage and you want to be able to just find your apps, you literally can just swipe up from the bottom and then you have all of the apps that you have installed is uh, as accessible that way. So when we talk about being able to customize it, we, we really mean that. Like we mean you can customize it. Your, your customers really can take this radio and you could send it out of your shop uh, looking basic and normal and, and factory. And then when they come back to uh, get more work done on their vehicle, you may jump in and not even know where the icons are because they've created it and it's functioning the way they want it. Like that's, that's really the way we live life anymore, right? Like my phone looks different than your phone. And for us to be able to, you know, do that on the radio so that when you get in your vehicle, you are just, you are enjoying the system built the way you want uh, adding the apps like Ring and all of these different cool apps. Um, when we talk about being able to customize it, so we're making the install simple. We're making the install clean and easy and, and effective. And ultimately, we're giving your customers an experience when it comes to in-car multimedia that nobody else is giving them. Um, yeah, guys, I think those three reasons uh, will set apart any sale when it comes to uh, whether a customer should get a Lynxwell or another manufacturer's radio. Uh, simpli simplicity of install, uh, beautiful fit and finish, easy setup, and the ability to customize it, I think are three ways uh, that Lynxwell separates ourselves uh, from everybody else. Well, thank guys for joining me on this workshop. Uh, I really hope that something I said kind of excited you or gave you some clarity, maybe helped you on some, some different situations. If you ever run into a situation where you need some help, we do have live text here. Uh, ready to take your call, ready to take your email, even your text messages. Uh, we are ready. We want to help you as much as possible. So you can give us a call here in the office. Uh, you can message us. You can email us. Uh, you can jump on our website, www.linkswellinc.com.
www.thechatbrothers.com. We've got some links there to the chat as well. We've got our YouTube channel. We do uh, our best to kind of create some content that will help you guys. If you aren't part of our dealer-only Facebook group, um, message me, guys. Email me, john at linkswillink.com. I'd love to get you in that group. We've got some um, just some tools that help things if you happen to be doing an install on the weekend. Uh, but yeah, our techs are ready. We want to help you. Because uh, we are proud of our product, we are excited of our product, and we want you guys to to be the same, uh, and we want to equip you guys as best as possible. So if you need anything, you let us know. Hit us up. We're here for you. Thanks again for watching.